कलकत्ता में कितने माल है हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम हैव टेकन क्रेडिट ऑफ लिफ्ट एस्कलेटर हंड्रेड अदर कैपिटल गुड्स आर यूज्ड आर दे टेकिंग क्रेडिट ऑन दैट मोस्टली 90% दे वांट बी टेकिंग दे कैन सर्टेनली टेक बिकॉज़ दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग द सर्विस विद दैट यूजिंग दैट लिफ्ट ओनली द रेंट गोस अप बाय अनदर 2 3 रुपीस बिकॉज़ ऑफ एस्कलेटर समथिंग मोर हैपेंस last item which i want to take is credit available on invoices more than one year this is a very retrograde step which was taken by government last budget in october where they said 6 months they limited the 6 months from the date of invoice beyond that you can't take credit so now it is one year in this budget they have extended it to one year is this legally legally valid in my view it's legally valid but for past demands past demands means i am a service provider who has not paid the tax because i have not paid the tax i have not shown my liability i have not shown my credit but if you want to demand tax from me now then i should be eligible for invoices beyond one year because you are asking me to pay taxes beyond one year this is only a thought process which i am sharing with you of the last one so you can certainly write to me you have one day time to write for getting free opinions one day so no can i ask one thing yes sir is there a director's fee which is payable on, on the basis of a of articles issued on board resolution is is the director is uh, liable for payment of uh, service tax yes sir yes. director's fee is on reverse charge basis by the company we have to pay as long as you are a director unless you are an employee if you are a whole time director or you are an employee director then uh, sir this reverse charge does not apply now in, in that case director will be have to charge the uh, no no director does not have to charge company will have to pay under reverse charge okay. company has to pay under reverse charge they can take credit also they, they can get get credit also yes yes why not director service is without director how will company go it will come directionless no how they they can uh, can they get get credit on the service tax yes sir why not they will pay under reverse charge and they will take the credit so in that case all the registration formality has to be maintained by the company yes yes sir anyway company is liable under so many reverse charge gta is liable manpower service works contract security service they are liable under so many they will maintain on that anyway under the same service tax number as receiver and provider you can have one return only thing different balance have to be given thank you but company can do that again i would like to acknowledge mona lisa who has prepared the paper also and this powerpoint presentation also and she is from your region so if you clap loudly i tell her you all clap loudly thank you very much and i think i have talked from morning you must be fed up of seeing my face you can see सेंट्रल कौन से and uh, unfortunately he lost this time but we pray him to reconfess and come in the council he don't want to come in the council so uh, thank you very much sir ladki ke jaise ladki ko ja ke dekh ke aap nahi chahiye bol ke aur kar raha hai so thank you very much sir now we have our very own arun agarwal ji uh, he will speak on vag in works concept uh, vaishwamar vag so over to arun ji I request sir. Ah, there is one lady. There is one lady. Please welcome Arun ji to the bouquet of flowers. Thank you. My co-speaker, Mr. Madhukar from Bangalore. and all my professional friends present here a very good afternoon to all of you friends the topic given to me works contract under wb vat basically i am sure mr madhukar since talking since morning on works contract and he has covered aspects of proposed gst aspects of service tax and in all these discussions definitely 
the major decisions of Oxford track Larson and Tumro, Kone elevators, K Raheja, all are discussed. So most of the aspects are also I'm sure discussed, but still just from specifically West Bengal VAC perspective, I would try to con uh, confine my discussions to works contract in the perspective of West Bengal VAC provisions. In fact, maybe not very specifically West Bengal VAC provisions, but VAC provisions from, from the perspective of VAC. And I would just skip this uh, background, straight away I would go to Straightway, I would start from here, from a very plain reading of the uh, language of the definitions. What is a works contract? A works contract includes an agreement for carrying out building construction, processing, fabrication, erection, installation, repairs, etc. A typical contract for carrying out building construction, processing, fabrication, erection, installation, repairs, etc. These are the various types of works for which an agreement to carry out all these kinds of works. This is a works contract. Now what is the nature of works contract? It normally includes supply of materials and supply of labor. Labor means labor or services, whatever it may be. So that means, uh, again as I said, you must have already um, participated in the discussion on Supreme Court in case of Larson and Tubro where the principles laid down by the Supreme Court is plain and simple that it would be uh, composite contract involving both supply of material as well as supply of labor and services. So this is a typical works contract. Now friends, when this is a typical works contract which includes supply of material as well as supply of labor and services, then what is the taxation structure for a works contract? Just maybe out of that, out of this discussion some points may be repeated as well. At cost of that repetition as well, I would like to uh, prepare or I would like you to go through a summarized picture of works contract. Materials labor. Now materials, basically there is a sale because a transfer of property in goods involved in execution of a works contract, that is what is liable to VAT. So that is considered or that is included in the definition of sale. So that is the deemed sale. The definition of sale of goods which is liable to tax under VAT or sales tax as the case may be. So that is sale. So material portion out of a works contract is liable to tax as a sale and VAT or sales tax is payable as the case may be. Similarly, the labor portion that is labor or services included in that works contract, that is a taxable service, that constitutes a taxable service on which service tax is payable. And in some cases, a works contract may lead to or may uh, constitute manufacture of a final product, finished goods or final product, which where, where again the taxable event becomes manufacture and if it is a manufacture, it may be liable to central excise duty. So, a works contract might have implications under VAT as well as service tax as well as central excess and of course income tax as well, TDS etc. are there, I am not going into that aspect. So, this is a typical situation of a works contract. Now, the taxable event for VAT is, we know, sale of goods. For service tax, the taxable event is taxable service, that is provision of a service and for central excess, it is the manufacture. So, a works contract may involve sale of goods which is liable, where the person, who is the person liable to pay taxes under all these taxes, uh, under all these statutes, under VAT, since the taxable event is sale of goods, so typically a seller is liable to, that is the selling dealer is liable to pay VAT. Similarly, since the taxable event from service tax viewpoint is taxable service, so the provider of a service, that is the service provider, he is liable to pay service tax. Typically means under, under an ideal situation and in central excise since manufacture is the taxable event so the manufacturer is the person liable to pay central excise duty. So a works contractor may be a selling dealer, may be a, tax, a taxable service provider, may be a manufacturer as well. So all these three and accordingly all these three implications could be there. Now what are the judicial pronouncements? I am just trying to take you through uh, some quick snapshots on uh, works contract. Now, under sales tax or VAT, three landmarks, in fact, not why only three, many judgments are there. I have just, I have just picked up these three, Canada and way back in 1958, then K. Raheja in 2005, and then Larson and Tubro in 2013. And of course, the latest one, Kone Levitas in 2014. 
and um, after that again we have some more judgments anyway. So last night to grow and these three judgments I am trying to point out very specifically. Kalan way back in 1958, then K. Raja in 2005 and then last night to grow in 2013 where Supreme Court laid down certain principles relating to works contract from sales tax perspective. And in case of service tax, trading industrial company, this was a judgment from tribunal finally upheld by the Supreme Court. I will come to that. What are the issues here? Here And in central exercise, seed food paper mill was one judgment, one landmark judgment in respect of works contract. Works contract, here I am specifically talking about from central exercise viewpoint because construction of a building is not a manufacture of goods. So it is an immovable property, so it cannot be chargeable to central exercise. But when it comes to works contract, that is various engineering constructions, there, like, like let's say, uh, fabrication and erection of plant and machinery outside to be more specific. That is also a works contract, that is also construction, but there it may amount to manufacture. So in case of Sirpu paper mills and then in case of Thriveni engineering, these are two landmark judgments from Supreme Court on works contract or rather not works contract, manufacture of plant and machinery assembled at site, whether it would be liable to central excise duty or not, whether it is a manufacturer or not. And to be more precise, there the issue in both these cases was whether the plant and machinery which is erected at site whether that is movable or immovable and accordingly whether that would be liable to central excise duty or not. In case of Sirpo paper mills and both were more or less on the same perspective in same line but still in case of Sirpo paper mill Supreme Court initially said that it is a manufacture of excisable goods because and you see the point of the issue here was in case of Sirpo paper mill a huge continuous process plant, let's say it was particularly a case of paper mill. Paper mill is a very huge size continuous process plant and that plant was assembled and erected, fabricated and erected at site. So, and that plant invariably has to be embedded into earth. So when it is embedded into earth, a huge uh, civil construction work is required and um, by which this entire plant which is again erected and fabricated at site but that plant is embedded into it through that civil construction so it is almost immovable but still the Supreme Court held that no it is movable because the plant can be disassembled the plant can be uh, uh, disassembled and then it can be shifted to somewhere else so it could be treated as movable and accordingly it could be chargeable to central excise duty but subsequently in case of Triveni engineering Supreme Court departed from this view Supreme Court departed from the view taken in seafood paper mills. There they said that uh, no, it may it may not be uh, liable to central excise duty. Rather, only when it is, and particularly when the plant machine is embedded and erected, fabricated and erected at site in a way like a building or a tree. Like a building means brick by brick construction of a building. But it becomes immovable only if you totally dismantle that building. Then only maybe some bricks etc. So some salvage value could be there. Similarly, if in that manner, if a plant machine is assembled and erected at site, then it would be immovable. But if suppose it is just like nut and bolts, suppose you have put some nuts and bolts and you have erected the plant and you just unfold the nuts and bolts and, take, and then you just shift that plant somewhere else and again you just fit it up, then it could be said to be movable. So this was the view taken by Supreme Court. So what I am trying to point out here is, that in case of central excise also whether it is manufactured or not, whether it is excisable goods or not for that matter, whether it is movable or not, those could be the issues and accordingly central excise implications would be decided. I am not going to final aspects of it whether in what circumstances excise would be payable or not but just these are also the aspects which are to be taken care of. Now friends, the rate of tax, first of all I would like to talk about the rate of tax. You know what is the rate of tax in VAT? And here I am more particular about West Bengal VAT. You know, in all the states we have the VAT tax, the respective VAT tax have a schedule to the Act which provides for rates of taxes for various goods. So schedules like in West Bengal also we have schedule A, schedule B, schedule C, schedule C, capital A like that. So one schedule is for zero rate of tax, another schedule for 1% rate of tax, another schedule for 4% or 5% as the case may be, that is the standard rate. I, uh, concessional rate and the other schedule is for 14.5. Initially it was 12.5, subsequently it is to 13.5. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 5%. Actually, some, oh, yeah. sorry, it is all. Yes, declared goods also now it is made 5%. So, uh, and subsequently the standard rate from 12.5% it was raised to 13.5 and now it is 14.5. So, what I am, the main point here is that the scheduled rates are applicable for sale of goods when the goods are sold as such. 
but when it is a works contract then also the transfer of property in goods involved in execution of a works contract is also sale that is a deemed sale but here the scheduled rates are not applicable there is a special rate in western wall that only the declared goods which are involved in that transfer of property that declared goods would be chargeable at 5% and balance all other goods would be taxable at the rate of 14.5% which was initially 12.5 then 13.5 and now 14.5 irrespective of what is the scheduled rate for those particular goods involved so that is the main point or major point which i just wanted to point out here and service tax you know at applicable rate 12.36 central excise whatever is that applicable rate maybe maybe time to time it is 12, uh, 14% as of now it is across the board the standard rate is 12% not 14% and exemptions if any whatever that i am not going into now for valuation for bad purpose what is the valuation procedure what is the valuation mechanism the valuation provides for maybe number one is on actual material actual basis that is what is the actual value of material involved so you derive at the derive the actual value of material involved that means by way of deduction of labor and other services etc those are the aspects we will later on uh, discuss in little detail so you deduct labor and services etc and then you get the actual value of material involved on which you pay back out of that the declared goods at the rate of 5% the balance all other goods at the rate of 14.5% 12 13 or 14 as the case may be presumptive taxes presumptive method that is rule 30 investment or rule 30 sub rule 2 that provides for a formula different formula for different types of works contract let's say hypothetically we take an example of 25 20 55 in case of construction of a building say the formula is 25 20 55 what does it mean 25 percent is assumed towards labor and services so out of the total contract value you deduct 25 percent on account of labor and services on which no tax is paid out of balance 75 20 percent is assumed to be declared goods on which 5 percent rate of tax would be applicable and the balance 55 percent would be assumed to be all other goods other than declared goods and on which 14.5 percent rate of tax would apply so that is presumptive uh, what is the actual value of declared goods what is the actual value of labor and services what is the actual value of other materials that is not relevant you straight away apply this formula 25 20 and uh, 25 20 25 20 55 is just a hypothetical formula i gave you but there are different formula for different types of contracts even in rule 30 sub rule 2 in the west bengal Act rules and similarly in all other states there are the almost all other states i'm sure because uh, maybe one or two states may not have as well but almost all other states have this kind of presumptive formula for different types of works contracts so you apply that formula and pay tax accordingly so that you don't have to derive the actual value of material by way of deduction of actual value of labor and services etc so that you can opt for so these are the two alternatives and the third alternative is composition scheme like under composition scheme investing on you pay at the rate of two percent on the or actual transfer price so two percent this percentage may vary from state to state and there are various other conditions attached to that that also may vary from state to state but basically this is a third alternative which is also available almost in all these states so these are the three alternatives now in the first two alternatives that is if you derive the value of material on actual basis you can claim input tax credit of tax paid on purchases which are used in execution of works contract and the property in which is transferred that means if you are purchasing consumables which does not form which does not um, comprise of the, the value does not comprise of that in that case no input tax credit so it has to be included in the value of materials on which trans property is transferred so in that case that um, is covered under the definition of inputs and accordingly input tax credit would be available similarly if you go by the second alternative that is the presumptive formula they are also input tax credit is available but the third one that is composition scheme when you go to composition scheme no input tax credit is available but of course in all these three if you have any stds that is tax deduction at source under the works contract tax or VAT as the case may be that credit you can always claim that is a different issue now for service tax i am not going into because you have already discussed in quite detail for for centric says just maybe two minutes i may take that is contractual transfer price that is material is liable to VAT service portion is liable to service tax and contractual transfer is that is the composite one the composite value because if like say in case of pre engineering or CPU papers as the case may be as i say if it is a plant you may say assembled and directed at site and if that is amounting to manufacture as per the principles laid down then the entire value would be liable to centric size duty that means there are no bifurcation of material value and service portion so the entire value would of course be liable to centric size duty now 
for VAT purpose, liability of course on sale or transfer, credit or adjustment that is for TBS, again as I said, it is available, input tax credit on purchase is available, presumptive, the formula etc. may be may vary, composition scheme also, the conditions etc. may vary from state to state, that is what I am just trying to uh, make clear here. Now friends, for VAT compliance, we have to also uh, take care of compliance under VAT, where the issues are that every works contractor has to get registration or obtain registration under VAT, has to determine the tax payable, has to file returns, has to undergo the assessment and all these procedures are compulsory or mandatory for each and every works contractor. Why I am saying so? Why is it necessary to point out here? We are coming across many cases where the contractors would come and say that Amato no VAT registration ni, Dorkani Karan Amato VAT works for the test it is already on a kit in each, VAT kit in each. The contractor is saying that Amato Kajata means what? Maybe they are working for let's say NHAI or PWD or some PSUs or some other government departments or maybe Defense, Minister of Defense and all. So there they are saying that 2% of root, you know, in West Bengal, uh, now it is increased to 3%. So 2% or 3% STDs, as the case may be, is being deducted by them. So they are saying that our other thing percent cut is So there is no question of further uh, registration or filing returns or assessment, etc. Anybody, government, no, deduction is okay. What I am saying is the contractor is saying that since we have to be percent cut, we have to be able to register some kind of return file, we have to be able to do something. But that is not correct. What I am saying is still the dealer, the works contractor has to obtain registration and every quarterly or monthly as the case may be, he has to compute his tax liability and naturally the tax liability has to be computed monthly like investment government, it has to be computed monthly. So monthly tax liability to be computed means that in that particular month what is his total uh, contractual transfer price or value that is certified etc as the case may be and on which what is the tax amount which is coming up uh, under out of all these three options alternative whichever he may opt for and then how much is the input tax credit available and what is the input tax credit available based on what is the what are the various purchases in the first two cases second uh, third alternative no input tax rate available and how much is the stds deducted from his account during that month so this way month to month basis the calculation has to be done and accordingly tax liability has to be computed so if there is any shortfall in one month it has to be paid in cash in a particular month if there is excess then naturally the input tax rate may be carried forward like that so it may so happen and at the end of the financial year also for the whole financial year when you do this calculation you may land up maybe with some shortage that is you may have to pay some tax in cash or you may land up paying excess as well in that case you can claim refund as well but still because of non-awareness, many cases we are coming across where the contractors are saying that our 3% or 2% TTS is cut, then we don't have to pay any single tax payment regularly. But they have not paid any single chalan, they have not filed any return, they have not obtained registration as well. And even we have come across cases where large size corporate houses, they are doing various construction activities, but still compliance is so far as VAT, works contract is concerned, returns etc. proper compliance is not there. These are the, this is the situation of compliance, that is why I was more particular about this compliance procedure that it has to be followed. It is not sufficient that um, the STDS is deducted, that is not sufficient. Sir, in case of uh, third option, Sorry? in case of third option, uh -huh. that, uh, composition, composition has to pay additional purchase tax for the unregistered purchase of that. Now you see, purchase tax is liable to, pay, to be paid when? If you are a registered dealer and you are purchasing from an unregistered dealer, first you are a registered dealer, so even if you are under composition scheme, you are a registered dealer. Number two, if you are purchasing from an unregistered dealer and number three, yes, in respect of composition scheme, yes, invariably it is. Apart, apart from 3%, Correct. In, invariably it is to be paid, but of course, he, since he is registered, but if he is paying or purchasing from an unregistered dealer. Unregistered. If he is purchasing from a non-registered dealer, then a registered dealer, then no it. Because only if he is purchasing from an unregistered dealer, then only the case of payment of purchase taxes there. Yes. Now, uh, now friends, specifically as I said, I would like to discuss these specific provisions in West Bengal Bank. Now, West Bengal VAT provisions for determination of taxable contractual transfer base. What are the provisions? Section 14, subsection 1. Transfer of property is deemed to be a sale. 
Then section 18 is the section which provides for actually the tax on contractual transfer price. So section 18 one says tax to be paid on contractual transfer price. Then section 18 two that is the most specific section which provides for the concept of taxable contractual transfer price. TCTP means taxable contractual transfer price. So that provides for the concept of taxable contractual transfer price. That means the contractual transfer, not the contractual transfer price, but what is relevant is taxable contractual transfer price. So contractual transfer price, price means the gross contract value and taxable contract price means something else other than the contract value. That means some deductions are to be made from the contract value to arrive at the taxable contractual transfer price. So taxable contractual price is not equivalent to the contract value but something less than that. What is less than that? That is given here in this formula, net taxable CTP equals to CTP less A tax free, B labor or services or like items, C subcontractors and D prescribed items. Now mind you, what is that? Section 18.2 provides this particular formula or definition of taxable CTP. It says net taxable contractual transfer price equals to the contractual transfer price minus A, B, C, D. These are the four items to be deducted from there. What are the four items? A, tax free goods. If the, naturally since as I said, Labor and services in any case are to be deducted, that is in B. So labor or service or other like items. So all the labor and service items are to be deducted, B. So you get the net um, goods value or material value. Out of that also A, tax free items, the goods which are tax free included therein, that value is to be deducted. Then C, subcontractor, out of the total value, whatever you have paid to the subcontractor, that is also to be deducted. So subcontractor, yes, registered, he should be registered and he should have um, paid tax on that and he should have included in his return. So those are the other conditions. So subcontractor, I am particularly, for this discussion, I am not discussing about subcontractor. I am not discussing about tax free goods. So basically the ideal situation is contractual transfer price, that is contract value minus the value for labor service or other like items. And D is of course certain prescribed items which from time to time may be prescribed. So accordingly, now prescribed means what? Prescribed means what? Prescribed means prescribed under the rules made under the act. So accordingly rule 30 of West Bengal Act rules, that is the rule which is prescribed. Where it is prescribed that what are the deductions available. And there this rule 30 specifically talks about the deductions available under section 18 2B that is labor or service or other like items would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These are the seven items given here in rule 30 break right, together with section 18 2B that says that these are the items which would be deducted. Now what are these items? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The main, the entire calculation of works contract is based on this particular single slide provision. Section 41, section 18, 1, section 18, 2, rule 30. Now this rule 30 talks about seven items as I said. So did A is execution. Now what is this? A is execution, B is planning. So execution means some cost of execution is there. B is planning. Planning means some cost of planning is also there, could be there. C is tools on hire. That means if you are taking certain tools on hire, that cost would also be there. Tools on hire means tools means what? These are the tools or equipments which are used for execution. It is not the property in itself is not transferred. So you are purchasing certain tools to execute the contract. Huh. Then D is consumables. Consumables again as I said, the property in which is not transferred. Consumables means what? Something which is used in the execution but it is it ends up in the, in the process. It is not contained in the final product. So in the property in it is not transferred. So that is consumables. Then E, F and G. What is E is establishment that is salary etc. office, um, office um, infrastructure cost etc. F is similar that is similar to labor and services and G is profit of course. Profit also would be there. So profit also now mind you a, B, C and D, that is any cost of execution, any cost of planning, tools on hire and consumables. Now mind you, planning and tools are, these are also again by way of cost of execution. So ultimately what is, what we land up at is cost of execution is to be deducted. That means the, the cost which is not attributable to the material but the cost which is attributable to the execution of the contract. And then consumables again a part of execution I am taking because the property in it is not transferred. So A, B, C, D all taken together it is basically cost of execution. And then establishment and similar other items these you have to mind, keep in mind what is the difference here. A similar is again labor or similar to labor or services that means this also I will take with A, B, C, D and F. So all these five 
together constitute cost of execution.